Across this great nation, there is a culture of people who carry on a heritage. They have an intangible quality that can't be described, but it comes from deep within their hearts. They share an appreciation for the greatest things that come from Mother Earth. They watch over, understand, and care for the vast wilds of this great country. Fishing, hunting, and trapping are the foundations that Canada was built on. For over two centuries, we have taken to the woods and water to pursue wild game. Today, it's about conservation, preservation, and wildlife management. Whether you are a man or woman, fish or hunt, you should support sound wildlife management and proudly say, I am an angler and hunter. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, a proud partner of Angler and Hunter Television. Mercury Marine and Lund Boats. Yamaha ATVs. Browning Ammunition. Browning Firearms. Suffix Fishing Line. Rapala. Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools. Excalibur Crossbones and Yukon Gear. As an avid hunter, I can appreciate the notion that a dog is man's best friend. And in fact, dogs play an important role in hunting and are invaluable companions, whether chasing deer and rabbits or flushing game birds and retrieving waterfowl. Watching a well-trained dog at work is a pretty amazing thing to witness. In fact, recently I decided it was time to get a pup of our own and got my daughter a chocolate lab for her 8th birthday. Now this dog is not just going to be her best friend and a house pet, but a true hunting companion that can come along on any hunt, be it for small game and waterfowl or sitting in a blind waiting for turkey or deer. Our plan is to introduce Brownie to a variety of hunting scenarios and include him in as much hunting as possible. Now don't get me wrong, we don't expect Brownie to be an award-winning trial dog, but we do expect him to work and be part of our hunts. For those of you looking for something more serious, and perhaps the next champion, then I suggest searching a club or breeder that has registered dogs and champion bloodlines. Recently, I was invited to spend a day with just such a group, the Southwest Ontario <laughs> Spaniel Club. Like this guy will cuddle with my wife like a cat. <laughs> nice. He just, just loves That's him. good to hear. English Cocker Spaniels and English Springer Spaniels come from the same route. In the early 30s, late 20s, they were the same dog. They just called a smaller dog a Cocker and a larger dog a Springer. That simple. A single whistle stops a dog, a double whistle calls a dog in. Keep it simple for handlers like me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's not a good one. Yeah. They come in all different colors. Yeah. Actually, I bred a black dog to a black dog, got that one and that one. Now, since Brownie's a fairly young pup, I figured I'd bring him along to get a little taste of how the pros do it good and get boy. some first-hand experience good boy. for myself. Come on. Okay, come here. Okay, stay. 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 Good boy. Good boy, Bandit. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Up. Good boy. That was awesome. Heel. Good friend Ian McGee is an avid upland bird hunter and a true sportsman. His love for spaniels was shared with us a few years back on a hunt with Roughwood Game Farm. These dogs that are trained for trials, they'll hop, and hop means they'll sit, right? And that's a safety factor as well. So these birds will sit, the gunner will shoot, the bird will fall, and then the handler will send the dog off through a tree gotcha. and the dog will bring it back. We don't want a dog that's not trained that's jumping all over the place right. for the safety factor. Gotcha. So if a dog's doing its business right, that's what it'll do. Yeah, I have seen dogs that can yeah. try and jump up and grab the bird. Exactly, and, flush, and, and right? that, can be <laughs> that can be dangerous. Yeah.
This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Training a bird dog is no easy task. Repetition and discipline are the main factors. Clay Earl of the Southwest Ontario Spaniel Club has a diverse background and is one of the top trainers in North America. So most people came to the Springer Spaniel game off of a hunting heritage. The dogs and fox primary purpose is to seek and find game, which is what most hunters are interested in. If you divide the dogs into sort of two groups, uh, there's this group of dogs that will go and seek and find game and those that retrieve it. A spaniel's first and foremost job is to seek and find game and then to retrieve it. So primarily um, a field trial for Springer Spaniels is about the closest thing you're going to get to natural hunting. And what you'll see today when you're out in the field are dogs questing for game and retrieving game, but they're doing it in a more perfect manner. And that's in fact how a spaniel field trial is judged. It's a put and take game where live game is put out, the dogs are asked to find the game, and then they're asked to be under perfect control and retrieve upon command. So we'll see lots of examples today of dogs working, working in brace, where two dogs will actually work in tandem, will honor each other's work. And that's in fact the same way that I would hunt my dogs when I take them to Montana or to out to a preserve or hunt any kind of a wild upland bird. The group had a good mix of Springer Spaniels and Cocker Spaniels that in all honesty are some of the best field dogs in North America. So this is one of the tests for a master hunter and Brian is going to complete a blind retrieve. A bird has been shot, the dog doesn't know where the bird is. The dog will be sent out and have to find the bird. It's not like a non-slip retriever blind in that the bird actually could be a crippled bird. The dog would have to hit the area and hunt for the bird. So goal is to get the dog in the area as quickly as possible and then let the dog pick up the bird just like in a real live hunting situation. The history of field trials for Springer Spaniels in North America is really a Canadian history. Yidor Chevrolet in Avondale Kennels out of Winnipeg was the winningest uh, field trial performer of all time and in fact is the founder of modern field trials. Uh, the first field trial in North America was actually held outside of Winnipeg in 1922. And so when we think of field trials and when we think of what we're doing with these dogs, we're training them for a more perfect manner. And with the number of national champions and high point dogs that we've been involved with, all of these dogs have been hunted in rough shooting situations with wild birds. So probably one of the most important things if you're going to acquire a dog for hunting purposes is to look for a reputable breeder. You can find reputable breeders on the internet and the first questions that you should have is what's the health of the dogs that they're breeding? Have they done uh, hip certifications and eye certifications on those dogs. Secondly, you should look for field blood and in the pedigree of the dog you should look for titles like National Field Trial Champion or Canadian Field Trial Champion. FC would be the, the abbreviation for a field champion in the USA. So you're looking for field bred blood that's healthy. The dog should be dogs that have natural prey driven. They should have retrieving desire. When you go to look at a puppy and pick one out of a litter, if at eight or nine weeks of age the dog is not retrieving, then that's probably not going to be a pup that you're going to be interested in. A spaniel by nature is a dog that will, at a very young age, start to run the wind and quest for a game. Willie! Here! Hop! You want to ensure that you get one that when you look Drop. at the lineage of the dog, it has that off switch that will make it a great family pet. All hunters out there would really realize that if you're out hunting wild birds, that noise is going to, after opening day, be a cue to the birds to take off. You slam the door of your truck as you're getting out and approaching that piece of cover, every bird's going to run out the end and fly away on you. So a well-trained dog is one and a well-trained Springer Spaniel that should actually keep track of you. And while we have a whistle like this and we have whistle commands that we use, we try to run the dogs as quietly as possible to not disturb game and provide that shooting opportunity that we're looking for. 
So a more perfect manner in terms of a field yeah. trial dog is really just one that will keep better track of you, is better trained, and will quest for a game and produce the game within gun range in a quiet manner from the handler. And finally, we look for in our field trial dogs, dogs with bold flushes. Those dogs are the ones that are going to have the prey drive that is going to be necessary to pursue wild birds. They'll face cover boldly and they'll be attentive to the trained qualities of a dog. So natural abilities are something that you're going to look for in a puppy. Then you want a dog that will be compatible with your situation. It should have a good off switch and be a gentleman shooting dog. The kind of dog you can bring in the house should you want and it'll lay down at your feet. If you see the parents of those dogs, you'll know that by looking at them whether that dog fits your lifestyle. The trained abilities can be brought out in the dog and there are lots of good places and resources for finding out about general obedience and training. But that's a starting point. Then you need to introduce the dog properly to the gun, properly to game, and then properly to control while questing. And clubs like the clubs you'll see across the country can help you with that. So this example of Springer Spaniels, you can see that there's a black and white dog here. This is actually the 2017 National Amateur Field Trial Champion, Pheasant Feathers Jack of Tasman. And you can see that there's liver and whites here and that there are different sizes and different shapes to the dog. The dog on the center, the bigger male, is a Satan style of Springer Spaniel. That's Field Trial Champion Bellwinds Willie. And next to him is one of his daughters, a little bit more of an English bred dog. Uh, that dog's the 2015 Canadian High Point Open dog. And then here's a true British dog, Irish dog, actually imported from Ireland. Uh, Karina's uh, on the smaller size, but you'll see a real spaniel -y action from some of these smaller imported dogs. Each of these dogs is a good representative of the breed, and if you're looking for a field bred dog, these are the kinds of dogs you should look for. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. Get out. What a great day, watching as these dogs worked in the field in such terrible conditions was very impressive. Equally impressive was the dedication and hard work the guys put into running a club and helping with each other's dogs. A special thanks goes out to Frank Wiseman for hosting the event and giving the guys a place to warm up and share the day's activities over a warm drink and a hot meal. My journey started with um, a trip to Pelee Island with no dog and my friend and I decided we were going to get dogs when we came back. And so when we came back I ended up with a dog that I bought from just a Labrador breeder and I uh, did a lot of work with the dog and then found out she was gun shy. So that was my introduction to field dogs. I had a field Labrador and then uh, basically morphed into uh, the love of spaniels and, and uh, you know and these guys really I mean their origin of course is England and they were always like a poor man's hunting dog you know you can buy a Springer Spaniel like you know a backyard breeding one for next to nothing and they're all field bred in the UK you know and you know yeah and they'll go you know hare hunting rabbit hunting snipe whatever flies you know they'll they'll, they'll when they go rough shooting you know without a dog to, to assist you in first of all finding the game and then hopefully retrieving the game is, uh, you know, it's really, to me, that's so important. And the, the added bonus for me over the years has been, you know, all the good friends I've made and uh, these guys training them. I love training dogs, you know. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge over the pheasants, 
the guys were using Browning Satori over and under 12 gauge shotguns, loaded with the new Browning nickel plated BXD Upland in number 6 shot. Camilla's game shears and knives made short work of field dressing all the pheasants. Okay, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite ways to cook pheasant. Uh, basically, uh, I'm going to make a small meal here for, for two people. It's going to have um, two pheasant breasts split in half, so you're going to have four pieces of meat. We're going to have uh, brown sugar glazed carrots, um, potato wedges, and of course the honey baked pheasant. So to, to do the honey baked pheasant, basically I've got my, my pheasant breasts here. I've got uh, my favorite uh, seasoning, which is fish crisp. I use it for everything. And then I've got a cup of margarine, um, five tablespoons of brown sugar, and two cups of honey. So to make this all happen, it's pretty simple. And in about uh, 25 to 30 minutes, you can be eating. So um, I put the taters in the toaster oven, carrots on the stove, cover them in water, turn it on high heat, and cook that down until the water is almost evaporated. Then you're going to add that, all that brown sugar in there. It's going to make a nice uh, sort of syrupy sauce on there that's real sweet. And I'm going to brown, first things first, the pheasant with about half of this margarine. You can use butter if you prefer. So I'm going to melt that all in there. There we go. Now once that melts, I'm going to put the pheasant in. So what I'm going to do now is take each breast. You're going to have four breasts in total. Make sure you trim any shot out of them uh, or damaged meat from the hunt. You're going to want to make sure you really coat that pheasant breast like so. Then you're going to lay one in there. Now remember, I'm just going to brown these. So I'm going to go medium high here. Now that this butter's all dissolved. Okay, so it's that simple. Those are in the pan. I'm going to crank that up. Carrots are simmering. And uh, I'm going to brown this real quickly. The oven now I've preheated to 300 degrees. You don't need it very hot. You want 300 degrees. I'm going to get a little bit of a crusty brown coating on that pheasant in there. So once that pheasant starts to get sort of that crusty brown, you're going to want to pull it out of there. Put it in your baking pan. So here comes the, the fun part of this. So I've got this in the pan now. You're going to want to take the rest of your margarine or butter. You're going to make a sauce that you're going to pour over the pheasant. This is the, the honey part. So you put the rest of that butter in there. You're going to take all that honey, two cups of it. Make sure it all goes in. And you're going to want to give that a bit of a stir just to mix the the margarine or butter in with that honey. I've got the pheasant ready here. I'm going to take that honey glaze, pour it over top. It's going to fill that pan. See that measurement? That's almost perfect. Now you got that in there like that. That's ready to go. And do a little shake. I like to put a bit of rosemary in there. And my last but not least, I've pre-cooked some bacon. You're gonna just lay that bacon in there. You can do the same recipe um, with maple syrup. It's just a little more expensive to burn through a couple cups of maple syrup. I put some bacon in there, some rosemary. I'm going to cover it. 
just with tin foil. So it's covered in tin foil. Oven's preheated to 300 degrees. Put it in. Close the door. Check your time. 20 to 25 minutes. That's going to be done. So now all I'm going to do is while I'm waiting for that is I'm going to finish off these carrots. I've lost about a third of the water in there. So at any time you can mix in that brown sugar. Now with that brown sugar in there, what that's going to do is, as the water evaporates, it's going to become viscous and that uh, brown sugar is going to turn into a, a syrup. And what you want to watch for when you're cooking these carrots is, as the water's all dissolved, you're going to start to see it thicken. And so you're going to want to just sort of, just take a fork, push it through them. That means they're, they're ready, nice and soft. And when you pull this off the heat and let it cool, uh, that's going to turn into a nice glaze. So those are ready. And there you go. Honey baked pheasant, sugar glazed, carrots, potato wedges, delicious. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire. Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Excalibur Crossbows, and Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.